Is phase four the weakest phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe so far? <laughs> <laughs> BD here with a video that is certainly going to make me no new friends talking about Phase 4's place in the MCU rankings and whether or not it is the weakest phase from Marvel Studios so far. I encourage everyone to share their thoughts in the comment section in the friendliest way possible. Please hit the subscribe button on this very Phase 0 YouTube channel and buckle up because this is about to be a ride my friends. Based solely on movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Phase 1 of the MCU averages a critic review score of 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. Phase 2 averages a score of 81%. Phase 3 has the highest score coming in with an 89% B plus for the recent phase. And Phase 4 brings in the lowest average, delivering an average of 74% through 6 movies thus far including the two lowest critic scores for any Marvel Studios films. Eternals has a 47% review score, and Thor Love and Thunder has a 65% review score. It is holding on to that fresh rating like its life depends on it. Phase 1 has the special place in all of our hearts. It started it all. It threaded the first exciting Easter eggs and tiny crossovers in the mix, and led to 2012's The Avengers, which at the time was incredibly epic to see happen as a big ensemble crossover. Phase 2 boasts a couple of the best MCU movies with Captain America the Winter Soldier and Guardians of the Galaxy, but it also is home to the commonly despised Thor the Dark World and the weakest Avengers title of all four so far, Age of Ultron. Phase 3 dropped some bangers with Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, Captain America Civil War, Avengers Infinity War, and Avengers Endgame, so it seems like a no-brainer that the MCU so far peaked with Phase 3. This is all. It was the most exciting time to be a Marvel fan. We got Spider-Man back in the MCU, the Avengers fell apart, they turned to dust, they came back, and they whooped Thanos. It was epic. Assemble. So how does Phase 4 stack up against these previous phases, review scores aside? Well, it's certainly not in Phase 3 quality territory, which we can't exactly hold against it because Phases 1 and 2 built up all the narrative threads, characters, and relationships, which Phase 3 got to pay off. But there was a sense of necessity in the early phases to watch Marvel movies as they would always connect and lead to the next one and we knew the Infinity Stones and Thanos were coming into play. Now with more than 50 hours of content in Phase 4, more hours than all of the Infinity Saga movies combined, the movies and the shows are lacking that through line which we now know only through a San Diego Comic Con announcement is leading to Phase 6's very exciting Avengers Secret Wars event. It doesn't help that the films have been so divisive through Phase 4. Thor Love and Thunder is a perfect example. The first time I watched this movie, I thought it was hilarious and a good time. Then I watched it again and again, and I thought about it, and I saw a story that just didn't really make all that much sense, even though the movie was tremendously entertaining. I think the movie could have easily been a lot better if it had about 20 minutes more to it, but the divisiveness was either you loved it or you hated it, and that same thing happened with Eternals. I'll never understand why Icarus felt the need to get all of the people who could stop him into one place when doing literally nothing would have seemingly allowed the Celestial he wanted to be born to successfully have been born. That was just a weird choice. But ultimately, Eternals felt like it crammed too many new characters and a massive exposition dump into one film, resulting in the best characters like Makari and Druig being brutally underused, an MCU villain in the form of the Deviants being forgettable, and a massive hand emerging from the ocean only to be acknowledged in a blink and you miss it news blurb seen on a computer screen in an episode of She-Hulk 25 hours of content later. Loki was one of the best shows Disney Plus has offered so far, but its ending has not been acknowledged by the larger MCU, though of course, yes, it had to happen for No Way Home and Multiverse of Madness to exist, they say. The thing is, there's really been no reward for knowing that. Moviegoers who didn't watch Loki did not need to know about anything that happened in the finale to fully understand the Spider-Man and Doctor Strange movies. This leaves a feeling of disappointment where there was once a feeling of being rewarded for knowing how these stories all interconnected. That's it. Phase 4 does have some bright highlights though. Spider-Man No Way Home fan serviced its way to legendary status when it brought back all three Spideys and most of their villains for one epic film. Peter! Yeah. yeah. And Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is the best superhero origin story we've had in a hot minute. WandaVision launched the phase tremendously, skyrocketing Wanda's popularity and making us ask questions and feel things that many Marvel projects have never even tried to do before. Miss Marvel was a lot of fun, also kind of educational, and successfully made me more excited for Phase 5's The Marvels, and Moon Knight was more serious. It also cemented Oscar Isaac as one of the MCU's best actors immediately. Ultimately, 
It will depend on Black Panther Wakanda Forever, how the rest of She-Hulk's episodes go in the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special to determine Phase 4's overall quality and place in the rankings. It does look like Phase 4 might find itself ranked at the bottom of the MCU phases as the weakest entry, despite having an abundance of content offered which might be part of the problem in itself. Yeah, it's a bit much. I think it's gonna be really interesting when it's all said and done with and we look back on phase four of the MCU, when more of the through lines emerge and we better understand what Kevin Feige and the gang were doing when introducing us to so many characters scattered around so many different pockets of the MCU. Do you think phase four is the weakest phase so far? Can Black Panther 2 save it? Share your thoughts in the comments section or send them my way on Twitter at Brandon Davis Beattie and subscribe to the Phase Zero YouTube channel for more videos like this one, exclusive interviews and live shows every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time throughout the She-Hulk era. I'm BD, I'll see you there.